Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of I Bought A Watch. Just before I get into the review, just some quick channel updates. So the Steel Dive has arrived and I completely forgot to do an unboxing and first impressions video, but I'm planning on doing a massive review to compensate. It'll still stick to my usual review format, but I'll throw in all the bells and whistles, including a strap showcase, and then I'll do a comparison with that rectangular or rectangular turtle. Sorry, I keep saying rectangular thrown in for good measure, just because I do know everyone loves a good comparison. In that video, I will of course be outlining how to enter the giveaway, so don't worry, it won't be anything too convoluted, because I do want as many people to enter this giveaway as possible. On that note, please remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification button if you want to be notified as soon as I release that giveaway video. Anyway, that's enough announcements, let's move into this review. So the review, as always, will stick with the same structure. I'll go through the background of the watch company, then talk about some of the dimensions and specifications, primarily looking at the positives, and close out with some reasons not to buy this watch. Now this of course does not mean that this is a bad watch, I'm simply outlining some of the things that I think they should improve, that if you have a problem with, perhaps this isn't the watch for you. Anyway, on that note, let's get into this review. So today I'm gonna to be talking and looking at the Dalios Waveform Diver. Now this is a really cool watch and also a channel first because this is the very first titanium watch. This watch is currently priced at $359 in a current sale they have on their website. I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you want to go check that out. The watch itself came in this rather simple packaging. Now I'm not sure if this is the final packaging as this is a review copy, but I'll just go through it quickly now. It's just a simple tin box with plenty of protective packaging and padding, and of course the extra links that I took out to make it fit my wrist. So let's go through some of the background. Oh, it's just started raining. I hope that's not coming across in the mic. Anyway, according to the About Us page on the Delos website, this is a Singapore-based microbrand. Delos is derived from a shortened form of the mythological Greek craftsman called Daedalus, who if you're not familiar with your Greek mythology, to be honest, I had to look him up. He is the man who designed the labyrinth which held the Minotaur on Crete. He was then imprisoned with his son Icarus, who you may be aware of, in a tower so as never to tell the secrets of the labyrinth itself. This didn't stop the man though, he was a cunning inventor and devised a daring escape using feathers from the birds roosting in the tower and wax from the candles they had in their room to create some wingsuits. Gotta hand it to the man, he really had a crazy imagination. Anyway, the story goes that Icarus, who if you weren't already aware, famously flew too close to the sun on their daring escape, causing the wax in his wingsuits to melt, and he unfortunately plummeted to his demise. Now that's rather macabre, and that's unfortunately not where it ends, as Daedalus also had a dark side himself. He was known to be a very proud man and couldn't bear the idea of a rival that when he was left in charge of his nephew, who showed great promise as an inventor and craftsman, he grew jealous and caused him to fall off the Acropolis in Greece. However, not to worry, the goddess Athena turned him into a partridge, of all things, and gave Daedalus a matching partridge-shaped scar on his right shoulder. This made me laugh and I only mention it because it's strangely topical as it is the festive season and an incredibly strange form of justice. Anyway, I'm getting incredibly off topic. The reason that they chose to affiliate with Daedalus is no doubt their promise to create high quality watches with eye-catching aesthetics, which bring good value to everyday people. So let's see how well they've done. First off, let's start with some dimensions. Now, I usually don't do this, but I have to talk about weight considering this is a titanium watch. So the weight of this piece here is 103 grams. Now I know that might not really seem like much and that number doesn't really mean anything to most people. So I've compared it to this Felida Submariner Homage Diver here. And this one weighs 151 grams. So there's a good amount of weight difference between these two pieces here. The diameter of this piece is 40 millimeters with a lug to lug of 47 millimeters, which is thankfully the actual lug to lug thanks to these female end links. 
The lug width is 20 millimeters, so that's good for strap changes. And I will be putting it on these two straps here later on in the review. And the thickness is 13.7 millimeters, including that beautifully double domed sapphire crystal. Speaking of the sapphire crystal, it is beautifully clear, thanks to five layers of anti-reflective coating that they have applied on the underside. The dial itself is a wonderful blue-black sunburst effect with applied indices. The 12 o'clock is a split shield indice with a double batten indice at the six o'clock and a slightly thicker batten indice at the nine o'clock. The remaining indices are circular applied indices, leaving out, of course, that cutout date window at the three o'clock position. It's important to point out that the date wheel is color matched and has a nice white printed date frame. Other printing on the dial includes the Dalios logo under the 12 o'clock with Dalios printed below that. And above the six is waveform, automatic, and 300 meters or 990 feet, of course, referring to this piece's water resistance. A minute track is also printed on the color matched Rehort, allowing for accurate time reading without having to clutter any of the dial itself. The handset here is a rather unique looking split sword style handset for the hour and minute hands with a nice long lollipop seconds hand to finish that off. I don't know if you can see, but the finishing on the handset here is a little on the rough side. However, Dalios has sent me a list of improvements that they're planning on making, which does include improving that finish. I will go over all of these in the reasons not to buy this watch, and as I go through the review. The handset itself and indices are pumped full of BGW9 Swiss Super Luminova. I'll pop in a loom shot here now. As you can see, the loom itself is very impressive and a beautiful icy blue. Being BGW9, it does hang on for a considerable amount of time. So this one, if you like your loom, is definitely a plus. Moving on to the bezel, we have a beautiful ceramic bezel insert, which does appear to be inlaid with metallic portions for the markers and Arabics. The triangle at the 12 o'clock is also filled with loom, which does give you a nice reference point in low light conditions. The 90 click unidirectional bezel does leave quite a lot to be desired, however. It's incredibly light action and there is a considerable amount of play when using it. The coinage grip, however, is very nice and it makes it very easy to grip and turn. And luckily after talking to Dalios, they do want to improve the bezel action with a 90 click unidirectional system, as well as making it slightly more resistant and improving the color of that ceramic so that it better matches the case and bracelet. The case itself is made of titanium, of course. And that of course adds the benefit of being such a light piece. The case and bracelet, the titanium here has been hardened and they have added type of coating to increase the Vickers hardness of this material up to 145 HV. Just to give that a bit of perspective, compared to your typical 316L stainless steel, which is 185 HV, so that's 40 HV less, which is still quite a considerable amount. Basically means that anything made of stainless steel will still scratch this. The case itself is finished in a brushed finish with this lovely high polished chamfered edge running up the lugs around the case up to these crown guards which nicely shield that three o'clock crown. Oops, sorry, four o'clock crown. Same again on the other side of the case. I also want to point out this does have drilled lugs, which is something I like to see and makes strap changes incredibly easy. I already spoke about the crown with these beautiful crown guards. It is a screw down crown, of course, because this piece does have 300 meters of water resistance and it is nicely signed with the Dalios logo. Unscrewing the crown gives us access to the NH35 movement inside. This movement features hand winding in the first position, pulling out to the second position allows you to change the date wheel. And of course, the third position hacks the movement and allows you to change the time. Let's quickly move it around to 10 to two. There we go. And threading and screwing this one back in is really nice. They've really nailed the threading there. Moving on to the bracelet, we have solid end links, solid links, and it's all brushed. It is of course 
also made in titanium, which is advertised on the underside of the clasp there, base titanium. The bracelet starts at 20 millimeters and tapers down to 18 millimeters at that clasp and features this weird dual screw link system. It's incredibly secure and I don't think it would ever come undone, but it does require three hands, two screwdrivers, and is a bit of a nightmare to resize than your more traditional one-sided screw. Now, I have spoke to Dalius again, and they are changing that to the single, more traditional style screw link system. Just to give you a indication of what it does look like, I have got the screws here. And if you see here, that's one side of the screw with the screw head there, and it has a hole at that end. And where's the other bit of the screw? Ah, oh, there you go. And then you have these tiny little fiddly screw here, uh, which screws into the other end of that. It, it's incredibly fiddly, although it is secure, I do appreciate the fact that they've changed to the more traditional system, because it just means that more people will be able to size this bracelet without pulling out all of their hair. Moving on to the clasp, we have a machined dual pusher fold over clasp with a nice four levels of micro adjust. As I mentioned, it is signed with the Dalios logo and Dalios under which, and I spoke to Dalios again, and they are going to finish the edges here in a high polish. The watch features a screw down case back, which is nicely engraved with that anchor chain and wave style design. It also has a list of specifications, including the name of the piece, waveform, the movement, NH33 automatic, titanium regarding the case and bracelet material and that sapphire crystal. It is nice and I thought it was slightly cute that they included the NH35 automatic movement instead of just automatic. As this is not a display case back, it's good to know that there's a quality Seiko movement inside. Before we get into the reasons not to buy this watch, let me pop it on wrist. As you can see, it wears incredibly well. It's nice and compact. It's got a nice diameter of only 40 mil. The female end links mean that it does sit very nicely on wrist, including the curved lugs, actually. Now, I'm gonna swap it out for these two straps over here to see how versatile this piece is. So first off, let's have a look at it on this wonderful brown crocodile leather strap. Okay, here's the first look, and I must say, I think it looks great. I love the combination of that stunning blue sunburst dial and this brown leather. Let's pop it on wrist. I think this one wears pretty well for a desk driver. It's a little tall um, for a watch, and the bracelet certainly does a better job of making it seem more tapered to the wrist. But because the lug holes are quite far into the case, there's not too much of a sizable gap. That's something I do look for when I'm reviewing watches, just so that alternate straps, if you are a strap swapper like myself, fit on it nicely, and there isn't kind of that unsightly gap in between the end of the lugs and the case itself. Speaking of which, let's pop it on this blue and orange NATO. I think this one is going to look good. And here it is on this blue NATO. Definitely a more fun and sportier look. It's definitely a bit out there, but I think the blue of this dial matches beautifully with the blue of this NATO. Let's pop it on wrist and see how it looks. Gosh, it's hard to do on camera. Ah, I'm gonna do it off camera. And there it is, wow, I think this one looks great. And to be honest, if I bought this piece, I think this is how I would wear it. It just matches perfectly with this blue. That looks absolutely stunning. And I must say, throughout the whole of this, the strap swapping has been made incredibly easy thanks to these drilled lugs. It's just a simple case of getting a, sorry, wrong end, the kind of pin end of the spring bar removal tool and just popping it in there and that pops out, pops out the spring bars just so. I mean, that's not entirely necessary when you've got a NATO strap, as you can just take off the strap like so. But it does mean that swapping straps out on this is an absolute dream, and you can easily get the spring bars out with little to no faff. Okay, well, let's pop it back on the bracelet. Now, of course, we end the show with talking about reasons not to buy this watch. Now, most of the reasons not to buy this watch, Dalios have already addressed. 
Those include the bezel being incredibly easy to move and having a lot of play. So they are, and also being 90 clicks to be honest, so they are gonna reduce the number of clicks to 60, making it far more practical. They're gonna increase the resistance and try and get rid of that play. The other thing that slightly annoys me is the handset being so roughly finished, as you can see. Now, they are gonna try and clean up that game. Of course, all these things that they've promised to clean up, I have no way of you know verifying that. It's just promises that they are aware of it and hopefully they listen to us and make those corrections. And lastly is those screw pins being just a bit of a nightmare to resize. But luckily it does have those levels of micro adjust so you don't have to fiddle around with those so much. And they promise to switch to the more traditional screw link system of only one side like we have here where you can unscrew it and screw it just from one side and it screws into the bracelet on this side. So those of course are the more objective reasons on why you might not want to buy this watch. Some more personal subjective reasons, this is a titanium watch. Now, personally, I've never handled a titanium watch before. And I must say after handling this one, I'm not sure if titanium watches are for me because this one is incredibly light. Now, of course, that's a good thing if you're looking for a light watch, but I personally like a watch with a bit of heft to it. So on wrist, I kind of felt that it, and you know, in hand, it feels a little cheap because it's so light. Now, I know that's completely untrue. Titanium watches aren't cheap. They require a lot more manufacturing because titanium during its manufacturing process reacts with oxygen. It's quite hard to manufacture this in general, but just for me, I think that titanium watches are a little too light and do give that impression of feeling a little cheap. So that's something to bear in mind. I would highly recommend going out and trying a titanium watch before you buy one because they might not be for you for that reason. Anyway, that concludes my review for this Dalios waveform. Please let me know in the comments below, are titanium watches for you? Do you like that they're so light? Also, I've been reviewing a couple of micro brands. Should I stick with the micro brand stuff or switch back to AliExpress specials? Because, you know, I want to make content that you guys find interesting and informative. I know a lot of people review a lot of these micro brands. They kind of go in circuits. So you tend to see reviews over and over again, which I don't know if people enjoy. I don't know if people are coming here you know, to see me talk about watches or whether they're actually looking at the watches themselves, in which case, you know, reviewing more obscure AliExpress watches might be a bit more interesting for you guys. Anyway, guys, please let me know in the comments below. As always, stay awesome, stay safe, and I'll see you again in the next episode. Bye.